This should always jive um, with what we do when we do calculations. And I wanted to take three cases of a concave mirror because this is something that um, we consider only uh, basically uh, with a certain conceptual level. And I wanted to show you these three cases um, in, somewhat, in some detail to show that the algebra should always jive with what we see when we draw a picture. So a concave mirror is one that's bowed in like this. Its radius of curvature is positive. Its focal length is positive. And for our expression, 1 over uh, p is equal to 1, uh, plus 1 over i is equal to 1 over f. We can solve for the image distance i. In, in generically, we say 1 over i is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over p. Or if I want to put this over a common denominator, that's p minus f over pf. Or i is 1 over that, pf minus p minus f. And we know some things about i even before we get too far. If this is a concave mirror, then the focal length is greater than 0. And p is always greater than 0, so the numerator is always greater than 0. Now we can take several different cases about where the object is located. If we take the first case where p is outside of f, in other words, the object is further away than the focal length, then the denominator is positive as well. And i is positive. That means that I get a real image. I should expect the image location to be here on the right-hand side of the mirror. Excuse me, the left-hand side of the mirror. And I also expect that the magnification, which is minus i over p, and if I put in uh, minus i over p, I get minus f over p minus f. I always get that to be negative. It's less than 0, so that the image is inverted. Now, how big will it be? Well, that depends. It depends on this ratio, if it's positive or negative, uh, excuse me, if it's bigger than 1 or less than 1, um, it looks like uh, it depends on just how far big away p is. So I can have cases where um, the object, the image will be a little bit smaller. I can have cases where the image will be a little bit bigger. I can also put the object exactly at the focal length. In that case, in my expression for what the image distance is, well, I get 1 over inf uh, 0, which is infinity, and that means i goes to infinity, and the magnification goes to minus infinity. If I were to sketch this, actually what's happening is the light rays are coming in, reflecting back, or they're going to the, the, the uh, location v at the center of the mirror and reflecting back, or they're heading in parallel and going toward the focal length. And you notice that these light rays come back parallel. So in fact, they never converge. They never appear to converge from behind, back behind the mirror, or they never converge on this side of the mirror. There's really no image. And so it's, we say that the image distance is infinite. You don't really actually get an image. So that jives. The, pic, the sketch that we make jives very well with the math that we did. The other case is interesting and is the case where what happens if I place the object too close to the mirror? It's less than a focal length away. In this case, p is less than f. And if I solve for what i is, it's p f over p minus f. If the numerator is always positive, in this case because focal length is positive, but the denominator will be negative because p is less than f by assumption here, and i will be negative. And as a result, I can always know in this case, if I stand too close to a concave mirror, then I'll always get an imaginary object, uh, an, uh, an image that's on the imaginary side or the virtual side. And if I look at the expression for the magnification, it's minus f over p minus f. This is always a number that's less than the focal length, and that's the focal length. It's always, in other words, bigger than the object itself. So if I put an object in close to a concave mirror, I always get something that's bigger than the original object, and it's always upright. And this is exactly how a shaving mirror works. I always have a concave mirror for a shaving mirror, and I always try to stand in real close to the shaving mirror, otherwise I don't look large in the shaving mirror. So remember that next time you buy a, a shaving mirror, make sure it's concave rather than convex.